In this video, we will be learning how to solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula that's written, well, a quadratic equation that's written in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, can be solved by the quadratic formula, which is this formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So if we were on to solve this equation, First, I'm going to write what a, b, and c represent. Now, I'm going to use the formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Again, I'll write it over here. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So all this would be over 2a. And now you got to clean it up. Negative and a negative give you a positive 5. Uh, negative 5 squared is a positive 25. 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24. All over 2 times 3 which is 6. Um, this becomes 25 plus 24 is 49 divided by 6. Well, we can actually take the square root of 49. The square root of 49 is the number 7. Not the square root of 7, it's the number 7. So, do not keep your answer like this. Actually simplify what the answers are. So, let's say that 7 was a positive. 5 plus 7 would be 12 divided by 6. And then 5 minus 7 would be a negative 2 divided by 6. So, our final answers x can equal 2 because 12 divided by 6 is 2 or, and it doesn't matter, x can equal a negative 1 third because 2 over 6 gives you 1 third. So in this case we can also solve by quadratic formula. So the problem here is that we do not have it set equal to 0. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get the negative 6x over, and you're going to have to get the negative 7 over. So when you do that, you'll get 2x squared plus 6x plus 7 equals 0. Because 6 was negative, so you had to add it to both sides. The 7 was negative, so you also had to add it to both sides. Now, um, you can represent A represents 2, B represents 6, and C represents 7. So negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So just to basically clean it up, 6 squared is 36, 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 7 is 56 all over 4. So you'll get negative 6 plus or minus the square root of a negative 20 over 4. Now, negative 20 can simplify. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go over here. The square root of negative 20, um, the negative means you're going to have an i, and the square root of 20 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, and the square root of 4 is 2, and then you would have the square root of 5. So it would be 2i times the square root of 5 all over 4. Now, you can stop there, but you actually can reduce it one more time. If you notice, the whole numbers, 6, 2, and 4, all are even, which means you can reduce by 2. So if I divide everything by 2, I will get negative 3i square root of 5 and 2 would be our final answer. Again, you can divide the whole numbers by 2. The square root you cannot touch, you have to leave it alone, but the whole numbers you can. Now there is something called the discriminant of a quadratic formula. It is basically the numbers that are inside the square root and some different things happen based off of the discriminant. If the discriminant is negative, okay, for example, if you notice the square root had a negative answer. And if you notice, that means that your final answer is going to have an i in it. And that represents an imaginary number. 
So if that happens, if the number inside the square root is negative, what's happening as a graph is that the graph doesn't even cross the x-axis at all. There are no real numbers. They're only complex. Now, if the square root is actually the number zero, literally if you have, if you get the square root of zero, then that means that the graph actually touched the x-axis. And then if the square root is positive, just like um, you would normally have um, here, you have the square root was a, an actual positive number, then it actually crosses two different places on the graph. So that's actually what this graph do is. So if you want to know how many solutions you possibly could have, um, then depending on what's going on inside the square root can give you that answer. So for example, how many solutions does the equation have? Well, we know that A is 1, we know that B is 4, and we know that C is 5. Negative B plus or minus the square root all over 2A. But the discriminant means we're wanting to know what's happening inside the square root, which is B squared minus 4 times A times C, which is going to give us 4 squared is 16 minus 20. And we know that 16 minus 20 is a negative 4. So automatically, since it is a negative number, then you're going to have zero real solutions. And you're going to have two complex solutions. <clears throat> okay, real world connection. A player throws a ball up and toward a wall that's 17 feet high. The height of the feet and ball in the from, the from the player's hand is modeled by this function. So this function is the path of the ball. Okay, and we want to know, will it make it over a wall that is 17 feet high? So basically, um, you have this graph to where the ball goes up and over. Now, you have a wall that is 17 feet high. And what we want to know is the path of this ball, will it be higher than 17 feet high? And so the easiest way to do this is you take your function And you take that the wall is 17 feet high. And you actually can graph it to see what it looks like. So when you pull up the graphing calculator, you will get negative 16. I'm just going to use x squared plus 25x plus 6. And then we also have the fact that we know that the wall is 17 feet high, so I am going to have a horizontal line being drawn to show the height of 17 feet. And then let's graph this. So if we zoom in, zoom in is number 2, so hit 2, enter. Um, okay, we need to go a little bit higher, so we need to go higher on the y-axis. So I'm going to go to window, and I'm going to make the y-axis go up to 20. Hit enter, and then hit graph. So the wall is 17 feet high. This is the path of the ball. Does the path reach the 17 foot high wall? No, it does not. So the answer is no. Now, review. I want you to pause the video and work through these problems of solving for x, of the different ways you can solve for x, and then I would like for you to resume it to see how I've solved it. Okay, first way, you can factor by doing two parentheses. What multiplies to give you negative 5 and adds to give you 4? And the answer is going to be a positive 5 and a negative 1. 
but you're solving for zero, so you need to actually set each of these equal to zero, and so you'll get x equals a negative five, and you'll get x equals a positive one. So those are the two places that this graph actually will cross the x-axis. Now the square root, you can do the same thing. To solve for x, you can actually set, uh, set this equal to x. So this is where you would highlight the x squared not wanting to touch it and you need to solve for that. So you would add nine to both sides. And then now that you have the square that's by itself, you can then take the square root of both sides and you'll get x equals plus or minus three. Don't forget, because you take the square root, it's gotta be a plus or minus. In this case, the entire expression is being squared. Um, so you need to subtract 10. Oh, that's a seven. You need to subtract 10. And now you need to divide by two. Now that you have the square by itself, now you can actually take the square root, square root both sides. Again, don't subtract seven first. That seven is being trapped inside of the square, so you cannot mess with the seven until after you get rid of the square. So you get x plus seven equals plus or minus, don't forget, the square root of negative five, um, which is i square root of five, because the square root of a negative is i. Now to subtract seven, x, is negative seven plus or minus i square root of five. Or the last thing you can do is the quadratic formula. So a represents one, b represents six, and c represents negative one. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four a, C, all over two times A. So you will get um, negative six plus or minus the square root of 36 plus four, because negative times a negative gives you a positive four, over two. So I'll get negative six plus or minus the square root of 40 over two. Now, you're not done because the square root of 40 has a perfect square in it. It's the square root of four times the square root of 10. So you'll get negative six plus or minus. The square root of four is two. You cannot take the square root of 10, and then your denominator is two. Now, at this point, you actually can reduce it further. If you notice the whole numbers, six, two, and two, all are even, which means you can divide by two. So you'll get negative three plus or minus the square root of 10 all over one. Or just negative three plus or minus the square root of 10. You don't need the divided by one anymore. And would be your answer. We discussed this at the beginning, but one other way to solve quadratics is by, which we have talked about, is by graphing. And so what happens is if we were to solve this, you would get x squared plus 3x minus 5. If you hit graph, you can see that it crosses in two places. In order to find what those places are, you would hit second, trace. You want the zero, hit enter. And I'm going to go ahead and find this one first over here on the left. So I need to go to the left side, left part of the graph, hit enter. The right part of the graph, hit enter, and hit enter one more time, and I'll get negative 4.19. Negative 4.19. And now, if I go to the other side, second trace, I want to find the zero, but I need to find this zero over here. Go to the left side of the graph, or the left side of the, of the x-axis, hit enter. Go to the right side of the x-axis, hit enter, and hit enter, and I get 1.19. So those would be the two answers. The difference is, is this is an approximation because we rounded, whereas this would be an exact. 
So if you were asked to find an exact answer, then you would give me the answer with the square root. If you um, are wanting to round to the nearest hundredth, for example, then you could graph it and it will give you the graphs. So the quadratic formula will give you an exact answer. Graphing can give you an approximation.